Welcome to our webinar about expecting, learning about how essential oils will transform your pregnancy. My name is Julie Homer. I'm a labor and delivery nurse, and I also share information about essential oils online at Natural Wellness Nurse on Instagram, Facebook, and also a Facebook group called Essential Oil Education. You're welcome to join any of those groups for further education, and we're so excited to share more about essential oils in pregnancy today. Uh, my name is Becky. I am also, as Julie mentioned, a labor and delivery nurse, uh, as well as a certified reflexologist. Um, I am on Instagram at The Soul Essentials, as well as Facebook, The Soul Essentials. And I too run a Facebook group called Everyday Essential Oil Uses and Education. Um, you can find upcoming classes and daily posts related to essential oil uses, as well as uh, just holistic integrative uh, healthcare options as well. Um, we're so glad you can join us today and let's get started. What is your goal? Please answer the following questions. First, define your ideal pregnancy. Second, what is your number one fear when it comes to your pregnancy? Third, what is your ideal outcome for our time together? Ponder these as we go along and we want to help answer these questions or help you answer these questions. And as we go along, we want to make sure that you know that anything we say, you, we recommend that you talk to your doctor. And also, doTERRA essential oils and wellness supplements don't treat, cure, or prevent disease. Your lifestyle choices can help your body do what it does naturally to help it heal itself and prevent some diseases. But regular uses of essential oils can help support any of these processes including a healthy diet and all of your lifestyle choices. What to use during pregnancy. When it comes to women's health during pregnancy, there are a variety of products that make strong health claims but could cause negative side effects for you and your baby. So it's important to find the right source uh, who is knowledgeable on the type of pregnancy you are looking to experience so that you can so that they can become your guide. I'm happy to offer support as well as Julie and guidance through this process, so feel free to ask us if you have any questions along the way. Why doTERRA? This is probably the question I get asked most when people hear about essential oils and when I'm sharing them, because there's a lot of brands of essential oils out there, but not all oils are created equally. The difference with doTERRA is that their oils are sourced from all over the world so that each oil is derived from its indigenous environment or the environment where it has the best soil, the best nutrients, the best climate, so that these oils have a, are a far superior product. And this is where doTERRA's commitment to purity begins. And another main reason why doTERRA is because they have a CPTG or Certified Pure Therapeutic Grade. And this is important because this shows doTERRA has integrity with their essential oils. They will not sell an essential oil that is not pure. So these oils have zero fillers, synthetics, no synthetics, no dyes, no pesticides or contaminants of any kind. Of any kind. They're just pure, unadulterated oil. They created this standard just so they could promise that their oils are pure and every batch is third-party tested. But I, what I want you to do is go to your grocery store and go smell some of those oils. Even in, I even saw in a beauty supply store, they started selling oils or Walmart. Go and smell those oils and then grab a doTERRA essential oil and even use them. You'll notice a huge difference because doTERRA essential oils are very concentrated where, and pure, where, whereas a lot of the essential oils in the stores are not, not pure at all. So, because they're not regulated by the FDA and basically you can put whatever they want in them. But doTERRA has a number one standard and are the largest essential oil company in the world for a reason. So that's why I trust them that they will not send out an, an, an adulterated oil soup. So Becky's going to talk about the three ways to use essential oils. Right. And Julie, I think you made a good point about, um, you know, just the quality of oils that you get uh, before moving on real quick. I've had many people come to me and say, well, lavender oil is lavender oil, right? And, you know, essentially, yes, it sounds the same. And in theory, it should come from the same type of plant. But the fact is, is it's not the same. And folks will, you know, 
claim that essential oils may not work for them. Oh, I've bought an essential oils before. They didn't work for me. But oftentimes it's because of the quality that they're buying and that's why they're not working for them. Um, so it is really important to keep that in mind when you're deciding to take this kind of adventure or this journey down a more natural health path um, that you make sure that the quality of oils that you're choosing is there. Um, three ways to use oils, speaking of. Um, there my two favorites are topical and aromatic, but there are three ways, so we'll talk about them. Topical is when you are going to apply air, uh, oil to areas of the body that need support. Um, they reach the bloodstream within 20 seconds and are then distributed throughout the whole body within 20 minutes. I mean, that's pretty quick when you think about that. Uh, it's best to dilute the oils in fractionated coconut oil to avoid skin sensitivities, and you're going to always want to dilute when it comes uh, to applying oils to your children. The bottoms of the feet are a great, great place to apply oils. They have the largest, por most porous areas on than over our entire body. Um, allowing for quick absorption. You can also apply on the back of the neck or down the spine uh, or, you know, really anywhere that needs support. Um, number two is aromatically. You can put a drop in the palm of your hands and cup it around your nose and inhale and wow, you are, you're just going to feel it. You know, when I first started with essential oils, I'll tell you a quick story. I kind of was hearing this, so oh, aromatically, aromatherapy, all these things, which is not anything new. We've heard about this for a lot of years, but I kind of was thinking, that's a little ridiculous. I can't, I can't work like that. But the fact is, and I know Julie can attest to this too, is there are many times that we have dads that come into births and they get a little queasy or lightheaded and down they go during the delivery. And you know, one of the first things we do is put smelling salts under their nose to kind of bring them back too. So that the sense of smell is our olfactory system, which leads right up to the brain is super, super, super powerful. How many of you can smell something and it can instantly take you back to a place or time? That is because that sense of smell is so powerful. Um, another way to get that aromatic, um, effect of oils is by diffusing them. Uh, we diffuse oils every day in this house. Instead of using air fresheners or uh, candles or things like this that have synthetic fragrances, we just diffuse essential oils and then we get to pick the oils that are most relevant to what our family needs for the day. Um, it can help with respiratory function or enhance moods or if we need to focus and study on things, whatever our needs are, we can pick what we want. And then the last way that you can use uh, essential oils is internally. Uh, doTERRA is one of the only brands of oils I would trust to use internally, but please do not assume it's okay to use, you know, to go pick up a brand of oil at Walmart and use that internally because pure Purity varies greatly and it's safe for consumption, but only if you have a 100% pure certified grade oil. Um, with that said, you can add a drop or two to your water or tea. Uh, you can put them in gel capsules. Um, there's, there's even... Um, uh, gel capsules, tea. Uh, some people will just put like a drop on the roof of their mouth if they need to have uh, a little bit of internal usage. But again, those are the three ways that we are going to, we can use essential oils day to day in our life. And then also I want to add that let's say that you are not doing home birth and you're having a birth in the hospital and you get an epidural, you may even have anxious feelings during that time. So using essential oils aromatically can make a huge difference. And I have seen it at my work for those girls who do use essential oils and it can help support the whole labor process. Absolutely. Now let's talk about nutrition, the to-do the to list. And then Becky's going to talk about the not to-do <laughs> list. Um, before I share specific essential oils that will provide wonderful support during your labor, <clears throat> I mean pregnancy, and once your baby is born, I want to dig into the importance of nutrition. This might sound crazy, but you are officially not only feeding yourself, but also your child. So you're selecting, the foods you select are so important and selecting the right foods has never been more important than now. I recommend that you have at least 80 to 100 grams of protein, dark green leafy vegetables, and that you drink at least three to four quarts of water a day or a gallon of water a day. 
And only after you have the proper nutrition do you add in essential oils and supplements from doTERRA. In addition, there's five things that I want to mention that are important to incorporate in your diet, which is folate, calcium, iron, zinc, and fiber. So search for foods high in these nutrients or supplement if need be. And the doTERRA Lifelong Vitality Pack is a perfect prenatal vitamin that we're going to touch on in just a little bit here. But you're going to want to add extra folate and also be eating healthy foods. And it's okay to eat things that are not perfectly healthy here and there, but making it a priority to, to eat nutrition foods is going to be great for your baby. Um, so be adventurous and incorporate all different types of foods that your baby is exposed to new flavors. Go organic and stay local to avoid pesticides because these are, can be damaging to your body. And also you're growing a baby, so you want to just have the, the best nutrition. Focus on omega-3 fatty acids and doTERRA supplements have omega-3s in them. And they support the brain development of your baby. Choose foods that have multiple benefits. Benefits like nutrient-dense foods such as yogurt, peanut butter, chicken, beef, eggs, and dairy products. Are, these are all higher in protein, calcium, and iron, and all nutrients your baby needs to grow and develop property, properly. Um, so now Becky's going to talk about the things you should not do when you're pregnant. Right. So the don't list. Um, so since nutrition is the foundation of a safe pregnancy, we want to make sure that you not only are aware of what you should be doing, but also things that you might want to try to avoid while you're pregnant. Um, number one is do not eat for two. I know that is such a uh, kind of fallback for many women when they're pregnant. Oh, I'm pregnant. I'm eating for two. Um, but many women will gain too much weight during pregnancy. So your goal should be just to eat until you're satisfied. Um, number two, say no to comfort food too often. White bread, rice, crackers, they're all really soothing during pregnancy. But try your best to have a more balanced diet and just eat them in moderation. Number three, although obvious, make sure your food is very well prepared. Undercooked food is dangerous for your baby. We see lots of women that come in and have food poisoning because of that. Um, and that is no fun when you're pregnant. This is supposed to be a happy, fun time. You don't want to get sick because you've got food poisoning. Um, make sure you keep any protein on the stove or in the oven for an extra few minutes just to make sure it's very well prepared and cooked. Number four, don't skip meals. I know when you're nauseous, it's the last thing you want to consider is eating, but fueling your body every two to three hours is extremely important. It's going to, you know, maintain a good metabolism, maintain a healthy um, diet and lifestyle while you're pregnant, and just keep your energy up as well. And number five, like Julie said, don't forget the water. We mentioned this earlier, but it's so important on so many levels that you're consuming a gallon of water a day when you're pregnant. That is probably one of the biggest reasons women come uh, into the hospital when they're pregnant is because they're contracting or they just feel flu-like. And usually it's because of the dehydration. You know, they've been busy throughout the day. They haven't taken the time to drink water. They'll come in. We'll put them on the monitor. They're contracting. We'll say, oh, how much water have you drinking? Oh, I drink a lot of water. And you ask how much, and they'll say two bottles. But folks, a gallon of water a day is approximately seven to eight of those little water bottles that many people carry around. So just be mindful of your water intake. Um, and yeah, so what does your, what does your pregnancy diet look like on a day-to-day -day basis? Just ask yourself that. Ponder that. Think about that. <laughs> We're gonna look a little bit more about the quality of your vitamins. The vitamins that we give out at the hospital are hard multivitamins, a pregnancy prenatal vitamins. And I've also seen some patients who wanna use their own vitamins and their gummy vitamins. Although it's good to have a vitamin, consider a more whole food type vitamin like the doTERRA supplements. In fact, you can try these and you can send them back empty if you want to after 30 days and get all your money back. That's why um, doTERRA backs these up because they know that they are high quality vitamins. Uh, they, specific, the Microplex VMZ represents the gold standard in vitamin and mineral supplementation. This is a food nutrient complex and it is a formula of bioavailable vitamins and minerals that are deficient in our modern diet, diets. The formula includes a balanced blend of essential antioxidant vitamins A, C, E, and an energy complex of B vitamins because, you know, during pregnancy, you get pretty tired, so you want something to help 
boost your energy. And this also contains chelated materials, including calcium, magnesium, zinc for optimal bone and met metabolic health. It also has a tummy tamer. So if you're feeling upset stomach, it has peppermint, ginger, and caraway. And then also um, it's encapsulated using sodium laurel sulfate free vegetable capsules. It has 22 essential vitamins and minerals to help support normal growth function and maintenance of cells. It helps to fight free radicals in our diets and also supports healthy metabolism and cellular energy, supports bone health, supports healthy immune function. I've noticed that I tend to stay healthier when I am using these. Everyone's sick around me, but I feel like it is helping to support my immune system and when I'm consistent. And it's also helped with my digestion and it also provides systemic benefits of vitality and wellness associated with optimal intake of essential nutrients. It has folate in it from lemon pill, but you also want to take extra folate on top of this because mm. baby's growing. And then it also has digestive enzyme blend of protease, lactase, lipase, amylase, all of these different enzymes that you need to help digest things because some foods do have preservatives in them. By taking this, it's going to help you digest those foods and have less upset stomach. And then it also is formulated to be used daily with the other multivitamins that doTERRA offers, and they come in a pack together, and you can get it discounted. Most people buy these monthly, and you get them discounted. And your shipping also comes back in points for free stuff, so it's pretty cool. And this is not regulated, regulated by the FDA. However, no multivitamins are. Only drugs are and medicines. And this product does not diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease, but it can help your body support its natural processes. Exactly. I agree with you. What vitamins are approved by the FDA? So you've got to find one that, you know, is going to work for you. Um, included with, you know, eating right and taking a good multivitamin and just helping your body have the best pregnancy possible. We're going to talk about moving your pregnant body. According to the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, pregnant women should exercise a minimum of 30 minutes a day, six or seven days a week, unless they have a medical reason not to do so. Because regular exercise is going to help maintain your weight, improve your circulation, boost your mood. It's going to help you sleep better, which can be very uh, difficult in the latter stages of pregnancy. Um, plus, getting into a good exercise habit now will help you set a good example for your child. Things like Pilates, yoga, swimming, and walking are all great activities for most pregnant women. But again, always be sure to check with your doctor first before starting any exercise program. The key with exercising is being sure to listen Listen to your body and don't overdo it. Um, you know, oftentimes women will come in and they've been very, very fit and active during their pregnancy and they just have these easy peasy labors, you know, so just, I'm not saying that that's going to be your labor or your experience, but it does help when you're more active. Um, another important exercise to do is Kegels. Um, I've had three kiddos and I still do these to these this day. Kegels help strengthen your pelvic floor muscles, which helps support your bladder, bowels, and uterus. When they are performed um, correctly and, you know, regularly, they can help make your delivery easier and prevent problems labor with incontinence. Here's the best part, folks. People will not even know you're doing them. So it's not like you have to take time out of your day to do the Kegels. You can do them while you're driving, um, sitting at your desk, standing in line at the grocery store, uh, anytime. You can do them anytime, and it's super easy. All you're going to do is practice squeezing as though you're stopping the flow of urine when you use the bathroom. So you're going to, like, you would start going and then stop it, and then start again. That's all it is. You hold it for three seconds, then relax for three. And you'll repeat that 10 times approximately, and do it a couple times a day. But again, do those Kegels. They will be helpful to you later. The next topic we're going to discuss is stress. And you are about to have the most momentous experience of your life transpire. So it is completely normal to feel pressure and stress. It's this is actually the first piece of advice I will share. Stress is normal. Stress is normal. Stress is normal. The reason a stressful moment turns into a stressful period of time is 
often because we begin to get hard on ourselves or feeling the way we feel. And this becomes a vicious cycle that leads to consequences, consequences that could easily be avoided. In addition, it's extremely important to put yourself first. Be selfish. Even when you're in the middle of your labor, I had a girl, she is lying there in the middle of labor and just people are texting her, texting her, texting her. Is the baby here yet? Here yet? Is the baby here yet? You can say no to your friends and family. Um, even before you're actually in the hospital and when you're in the hospital, because you need to take time for yourself. Even if you have to say no to your boss, if he or she asks you to take on more responsibility. This may mean that you have to say no to your spouse if he or she wants to make plans. Your needs are all that matter right now. So get clear on what you value most and make sure that always comes first. I always recommend delegating activities that do not bring you joy so you can pursue hobbies which nourish your soul. Start to create the space for, you can do reading, writing, napping, listening, music, painting, signing, singing, anything just to help you relax and bring joy so you're not stressed because we want you to be calm and enjoy this time of being pregnant and also having a baby. Um, you can also use this time to take advantage of sick days or vacation um, if you feel is best whenever possible and spending a day or even afternoon resting at home will help you get through a tough week. And then there is the obvious deep breathing and stretching that should take place each day and also deep breathing when you are in the middle of labor, because it can help to decrease that pain when you're taking deep breaths, say you don't get an epidural and you want to go completely natural, which is amazing. Taking deep breaths and help get through that process and just put, all this ritual will help provide a peace of mind and become an anchor that keeps you grounded during this extremely exciting and emotional time. Just taking that time for yourself. Absolutely. So it's doTERRA time. doTERRA has been instrument, an instrumental ingredient during pregnancy for so many women, but using these powerful products the right and safe way is extremely important. So if anything is not clear during our time together, please follow up with one of us afterwards for clarity. The first three months, even the first three weeks are a precious time of rapid development for your baby. So it's important that you take extra caution during this time in regards to what you eat and put on your body. Even the essential oils considered safe for pregnancy should be used with caution during this time. For example, instead of applying an oil directly to your body, you should dilute it first in a carrier oil like coconut oil. You can then apply it to the problem area or you can also apply oils to the bottoms of your feet, which is a common way we mentioned earlier um, to use essential oils on children. Though, as an adult, I put them on my feet all the time. A good rule of thumb, though, is to dilute one to two drops of essential oils with a half to one teaspoon of carrier oil. For newborns and infants, you're going to dilute one to two drops. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to go into how many drops per oil you can go to one of our groups, either one, and we'll have those posted at the end, and we will have an album labeled Expecting. And all of this dilution rates we will have in there along with the recipes that we're going to discuss here shortly. Uh, but the rule of thumb here is just to dilute. Make sure you're diluting. You can use um, coconut oil, olive oil, vegetable oil, almond oil, whatever oil that you feel um, your skin is receptive to. Uh, it's also safe to diffuse the right oils during pregnancy to promote a sense of peace and to help reduce stress. Like Julie said earlier, stress is normal. It absolutely is. You know, we don't want it to consume our everyday life and activities, but it can be normal. So our job is, like she said, to take some deep breaths, um, to kind of reflect, regroup, use some essential oils, and enjoy this absolutely beautiful process that your body is going through. Please ask us any questions before using any of these essential oils. I'm going to tell you a list of oils to avoid during pregnancy. And you'll notice that these are all single oils. So you're going to want to look on the back of your bottle of essential oil and make sure that this oil is not included in the blends. The list is basil, birch, cassia, cinnamon bark, rosemary, thyme, sage, tarragon, and wintergreen. The deep blue blend has wintergreen in it. The on guard has 
rosemary and cinnamon in it. And those are the first ones that come to mind, but you're going to want to, and also past tense has basil in it. I do know that basil and rosemary. So just look on the back of the blends and make sure that these are not in there and to avoid them specifically at the beginning of pregnancy when your baby is developing. So doTERRA will support your pregnancy. <clears throat> As you probably already know, there is an oil for everything. I know that we throw that around sillyly, um, but there is, there's literally an oil for everything. Um, when you are pregnant though, it's important to be more selective and to speak with your doctor or midwife for a second opinion if need be. For example, when you experience stress, you can diffuse lavender, ylang ylang, melissa, or myrrh. You can dilute these oils and run them on the back of your neck, your temples, your shoulders, or your reflex points on the feet. As a reflexologist, I am, I'm loving the reflex points on your feet. Um, that's a wonderful way not only to get yourself a good reflexed foot or a good foot rub, uh, but also a way to help absorb those oils that will support your body. And hey, rub on the back of your neck and your shoulders. Let your hubby do that. Have him participate in it as well. Um, if you experience temporary nausea in the morning, let's face it, folks, sometimes temporary morning nausea is all day nausea. But you can use, there, there's tools that you can use. You can use ginger or peppermint. Um, you can dilute those and apply them on your ears, down your jawbone, on the reflex point of your feet. You can also just inhale them. Again, the aroma of um, diffusing of these oils. Um, there are ways that you can take these internally as well by putting them in an empty capsule with olive oil. And again, we'll post those in the album on uh, the group. Um, but let's say you can't, you don't have a diffuser or anything like that. Just put the drops on your hand. Cup it over your nose, take a few deep breaths, inhale it in, and enjoy the benefits of that. Uh, if you begin to get hard on yourself or you need some practice in self-love, there's nothing better than diffusing Elevation or Joyful Blend. As the name suggests, Elevation is invigorating. It's a combination of oils that blends a euphoric scent to elevate your mood and promote self-confidence and increase your energy. Let's face it, a lot of times we don't have energy when we're pregnant or even a new mommy. So since pregnancy can be depleting on your body, you can use the energy blend, um, a blend of oils that you can put together, two drops of Roman chamomile, geranium, lavender, and a carrier oil and massage into the skin. Again, we'll put these recipes on the uh, group album. Um, but really, truly, there is an oil for everything. But it's just important that you consult an expert. Uh, and we're happy to be that person for you if you need to. I think Julie's going to talk about some homemade recipes now. The next, um, we're going to talk about some of the recipes like Becky mentioned, and we're going to post these recipes in an album on the group because it's better just to read them and you can make them on your own. This is a homemade belly butter for those marks and scars that you're probably going to get. Although they're badges of honor, they can be unsightly for some of you. So you can use a ylang ylang and sandalwood and make a blend of rejuvenating oils and help to diminish the appearance of these scars. And our next one, Becky's going to talk about briefly. <laughs> yes, pregnancy brain, folks. It is real. R-E-A-L. Real, real, real. <laughs> um, where are my keys? Do we have dinner plans tonight? I can't find my cell phone. Oh, that's right. It's in my hand. I'm talking on it. Where are my sunglasses? Oh, they're on my head. Um, I think you get the idea. I'm sure many of you have experienced this, uh, but there is a lovely blend that you can make with cedarwood, frankincense, patchouli, sandalwood, and vetiver. Um, that can help support a, a healthy functioning brain uh, and memory. So your family will thank you for this one. We are even here to help during labor, essential oils in general, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> you can use essential oils to help support contractions, overall discomfort, you can use warm cloths for discomfort, you put them in a crock pot and you can fill it with water and use lavender and apply to the lower abdomen or back at the beginning of each contraction. You can use oils for calming, such as in a diffuser, lavender, langling, grounding blend. You can make a cooling spray because yes, it gets hot. I see these mamas, they're dripping in sweat. So you 
You can make a cooling spray. Again, we're gonna put all these recipes on here. Back labor, and also for perennial support, as, as the baby is stretching out your downstairs, it's gonna <laughs> help to minimize swelling and help the tissue to stretch to avoid tearing because I've seen some tears. We wanna try and avoid that. And um, then again, diffuse like always. You know, Julie, and I don't know if you've seen this, but I've actually had people bring in their own diffusers so to use while they're in labor. Um, oftentimes, moms will just use them, like you said, on a cotton ball or paper towel, but I have had a few here and there that have done it, so it's kind of fun to see them. Um, the next one, labor support blend. This is a great blend that you can put in a roller bottle and bring with you to have on your big day, you know, your bags that you're packing for the hospital. It has ylang ylang, helichrysium, uh, cypress, black pepper, digestin, cardamom, peppermint, clary sage, and fractionated coconut oil. You can massage this one on the inside of your ankles, your lower abdomen, and your lower back. Um, and this is just gonna help support you through the, the, the big day. Our next is the peri pads recipe, and this is for post labor after the baby is out to help soothe your downstairs. <laughs> I keep saying downstairs, I know, but um, so you can apply essential oils to the pads, such as lavender, peppermint, geranium, frankincense, and helichrysum, and then you lay them out on a cookie sheet. You have this mixture, and you put it on the pad, and then you put it in the freezer. And so it's for after giving birth to help soothe that area and to help to aid your body in the healing process. And, you know, we're in our labor and delivery, we use an ice pack, but how nice would that be to have an ice pack, but with essential oils on it, they're going to help start that healing process. Oh my gosh, Julie, I totally agree with you because it's not, I mean, hey, our ice packs do the job, they work, but they definitely don't have that soothing and cooling factor and, and just the oils to help support, um, you know, healing and repair as well. So heck, if some, if you can make these moms and bring it in, go for it. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is our doTERRA touch kit. This is, I highly recommend this kit for all women, not only expecting moms, but just families and households in general. Um, the most common question that people ask and that you've heard us mention throughout this is dilution. So this kit is already pre-diluted and it has our top oils in it. It has lavender, peppermint, frankincense, melaleuca, digestin, breathe, on guard, oregano, and deep blue. Um, these oils are our nine most popular oils. The touch kit, like I said, is already diluted so you can use them uh, on children and adults. However, like we've mentioned before, I wouldn't necessarily be using these on your brand new young baby. I would look at our dilution chart that we're going to post in the album on our group so that you can dilute your own uh, blends that are perfectly, um, you know, have a good perfect dilution ratio for your little baby. Um, but these are, these are great to keep around. I have them tossed in my purse and I carry them everywhere. And whenever we need them, you know, if one of the kids needs some support with respiratory or they need some digest, um, digestion support, I have these, they are rolling right on their feet, right on their tummies or wherever they need that support. And they're so easy and convenient and safe and effective. So I love them. But again, for little babies, you want to make sure that they're probably diluted even more than this. And we will post that dilution uh, chart on the group album page. And you might be asking, well, how do I dilute that? Um, but you know, these roller bottles, you can get very easily online on Amazon is where I get mine and then that dilution chart will tell you how many drops to add and you just add those drops and then fill the rest with whatever oil you choose I do the fractionated coconut oil so again super simple and easy you can pop them in the diaper bag or your purse and carry them with you at all times so you have those available so unfortunately our slides got a little off and we'll show you what that kit actually looks like oh no that's just the only slide um, so we'll show you what the kit looks like, but I'm going to talk a little bit about postpartum support. Um, the entire birthing process is extremely traumatic on your body. You have this baby in your huge uterus, and then you push it out this little hole. So having the right products to offer support and to help everything get back to its pre-pregnancy status is extremely important. And so doTERRA is here once again as a powerful tool for you. 
you can make a peri spray with essential oils in it. A spray bottle, you can put lavender, geranium, helichrysum. You can also massage essential oils on your uterus. I personally would recommend the Clericom. However, it's already a roller ball. However, you can massage lavender and marjoram over your uterus. If you want to help with milk production, clary sage helps start the production, and then basil helps to increase the production. And you're always want to, going to want to dilute them and place on the upper part of your breast where the baby is not going to come into contact with the breast. And also to help uplift mood so you're feeling happy, you can use elevation, lemon, lavender, frankincense, balance, or even cheer essential oils to help with the postpartum support. Becky's going to talk about the diaper bag. Oh my goodness. I love diaper bags. Um, <clears throat> you know, I always had mine stuffed to the gills and I just could pull almost anything out of them. But raising your baby holistically is an extreme, is extremely rewarding because you can feel confident that the product choices are going to contribute to their health and enhance their quality of life. Um, babies are born toxic free and you know, us as moms and dads and families, we really want to try to keep them that way for as long as possible. Um, unfortunately, I know some of you guys have probably heard about the Johnson & Johnson um, huge lawsuit, and those are with products that have been around for so long that we use and trust on a daily basis, but that clearly still have um, toxic chemicals in them that are not safe. So what better way to help kind of divert that and remove those than by making over your diaper bag with some products uh, using essential oils? Definitely. And also it's very cost effective. You look at the prices of these oils, but you're using one drop here and there, especially for a little baby, you only need one drop. And so you're saving a ton of money by using these. And you're also giving the baby something that's more healthy and supportive of their system and not synthetic. Right. So just, and just because many women fall in love with doTERRA, it can also help, um, help with your baby in the transition into this world. So people, some people like to use these undiluted, but I always recommend dilution. One way that people like to use oils on their babies is to apply frankincense on the crown of the head to promote bonding right after the birth. It's very calming for the baby. It can also help with circulation. You know, when the babies come out and their hands are blue and their feet are blue. So I know people who've applied that to the, to those, like the feet especially. So it helps to create better circulation in those areas. And myrrh, you can, dil you can dilute it and put it on the umbilical cord to help seal the tissue and protect all systems of the body balance on the bottoms of the feet, Melissa, to help with DNA repair. Um, if you feel comfortable, you can use the respiratory blend, such as Breathe, to help with the, maintain airways. Or Digestin, again, if you feel comfortable. I prefer not to use peppermint on, or eucalyptus on babies, but some people have had good results. So Digestin to help with the tummy, but I also have a tummy tamer blend that does not include peppermint. Um, so you can look at that recipe on my page. Um, it's on the, the group. Aroma chamomile helps soothe irritated skin. Lavender is very calming for skin and also helps with sleep and then and also sleep for mommy. And Melaleuca soothes irritated skin. <clears throat> homemade wipes. Love homemade wipes. I mean, you're going to go through a lot of these wipes, ladies. <laughs> and gentlemen, um, in the course of the diaper changing stages of your little one's uh, phase. But commercial wipes are made with ingredients that can irritate baby's little skin. So this recipe is super simple um, that you can make at home. Uh, you just need some paper towels, some water, a little bit of coconut oil, um, some lavender and melaleuca and an airtight container. And again, we will have this recipe on the album in the group, um, but it's just super simple to make your own homemade wipes that are free from chemicals and irritants and you know exactly what's in them. 
And you can also make a diaper cream with lavender and coconut oil and melaleuca and it smells amazing. Um, you also need to add some beeswax to it, but I really, I've made this for mamas and it smells so good and it's really soothing to the baby bottom and it's very cost effective because lavender is, I think it's, it's eight cents a drop. So you're only using a couple drops and it just can go a long way. You know, it's funny. We, I just mentioned that Johnson and Johnson, um, lawsuit and this one this next recipe is for talc free baby powder so you again simple ingredients cornstarch arrowroot powder roman chamomile doTERRA lavender and finely ground oats and you're just going to mix it all together put it in like a shaker bottle um i think maybe like an empty spice jar i know tupperware has a lot of containers that have uh those lids that you can pop off and you can sift things like a spice container um and then just label your powder boom you've got homemade baby powder which is talc free and chemical free and soothing for your baby bottom now here's the picture of the doTERRA touch kit that got out of order <laughs> so you know what it looks like and that is an amazing kit with nine oils in it so it's something that perhaps you want to consider for yourself and also for when your kid is older and maybe you have some kids at home and you can use it since they're since they're older i wouldn't use these on newborns our next one is build a support network i'm going to shift away from doTERRA for a few so that we can focus on a few actions that will offer support many women men probably don't understand and girls who haven't had babies are, feel extremely lonely during their pregnancy, especially if this is your first time going through this experience. There's a world of unknown that stands before you. Your emotions could be scattered, especially with all the pregnancy hormones. You're like up and down and all over the place. And there might be a period of time when you stop working, you're by yourself for most of the day. That can become very depressing. I highly recommend that you have a local support group of pregnant women to meet with at least one time a week or at least find a Facebook group online. Or maybe there's um, an online chat that people do with pregnancy, um, like a Zoom chat or some virtual class. That There are options out there. So not only will this provide the much needed company, but it will also lead to new friends that you can see once your baby is born. Because you're going to want support once your baby is born because this is maybe your first time experience and you're not going to know how to take care of your baby because it's, it's scary. And uh, just having the support and of your, uh, not only your spouse or your boyfriend, but someone else who perhaps going through the same thing. I totally agree, Julie. I think that uh, my kids are a little bit older now, so we didn't have as much um, of the Facebook and all the groups that people can be a part of and Zoom chats and FaceTime and all these things where we could connect with people um, and sometimes it can get a little, a, a little lonesome, um, or sometimes you just don't know what you're doing, or, or sometimes you just need to take a five minute break. And so using those tools and resources to help you um, stay kind of uh, within, within a network and be supportive is absolutely key to uh, times that where you could, you just need that extra support. Um, <clears throat> in addition to that, staying motivated and excited your personal motivation is extremely important during this momental monumental event sorry which is why i recommend reading books that inspire you reading successful birthing stories that are similar to your ideal plan working on your birth plan you can find um, birth plans online that you can print out and fill out i'm sure they probably have apps for them these days you know, you can start decorating your nursery, envisioning the future, and just being excited. Again, this is such an amazing gift for you and your family, and life will never be the same again after this in a wonderful way. Um, so just use this time to enjoy the process and 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 just be there. Be be part a participant. Enjoy it, uh, despite the difficulties that may come along with it, um, and. In addition to all of that, I say be flexible because I think sometimes we get so caught up in what our ideals are and what our plan is that sometimes we lose that ability to see um, that things will be different, things will change, and we need to be able to 
you know, kind of go with the flow and be flexible. I tell moms all the time that come in with birth plans, I'm so glad you did this. This gives me a great idea of how to proceed with our plan. But as long as everything looks good, I'm okay with it. If baby tells us otherwise, we may have to change our plan, you know. So again, just going with um, the flow and being willing to be flexible if need be. Um, healthy baby, healthy mom, um, enjoy this experience, trust your ability to birth your baby, and we believe in you. You know, please share pictures with us afterwards when your baby is brought into this world and your birth story. I love hearing birth stories. Women, you know, in life, you will never forget your wedding day and the day of your children's birth. Those are just stories that always remain with you. And we love to hear them. So once you are done with this pregnancy and you've had this beautiful baby joy, we love to hear your story. So you might ask, what now? How do I know what to use? How do I get started? We want you to know that you're never alone on your essential oils journey. We will personally be there here to guide you every step of the way with answers to your questions, resources, introductions to other people who are on this journey with us. And we also have our Facebook groups, which you can join and be a part of. And if you choose to purchase essential oils through us, you will have our undivided attention. We will set you up with the sponsor who's going to support you. And you also have us. So that's what we can offer you along your essential oils journey. And if you've already purchased essential oils through someone else, no problem. You can definitely join our group because it's open to anyone. Definitely. And so how do we get involved? Um, how can I become what's known as a wellness advocate? That's a fancy word, folks. All it means is that you are jumping into the essential oil world and you want to start using them in your life. Um, and maybe helping others, whether it's just within your family or friends that you know, uh, get to know them as well. I remember the first time I was exposed to this information though, I was so excited, but I was also a little overwhelmed. And I have medical ba a medical background, you know? <laughs> and I was still overwhelmed with the variety of oils and what seemed like their limitless applications. So I was assured, just like we're assuring you that I would have support um, and I and that just to enjoy this adventure and this journey along the way. And I have, I've had great support. I've learned so much along the way. My only regret is that I didn't learn about them sooner um, in life, I guess. Uh, my life has been changed by using the oils. I feel confident that this will be the same experience once you get started. Um, and there are three ways that you could get started. Number one is purchasing oils at the full retail price. That is the most expensive way and it's not recommended, but if you don't want to participate um, in, you know, a regular ordering or anything like that, just purchase them whenever you want at full retail price. Option number two is to become a member, become that wellness advocate. Um, you pay $35 kind of like Costco or Sam's Club membership. That's for the whole year. And after you pay that $35, you are going to be able to purchase all the oils at 25% off the retail price, which is totally awesome. Who doesn't want 25% off of their prices? Um, and number three is by purchasing an enrollment kit. So similar to that touch kit that we showed you earlier, we have a variety of kits, uh, which we can put in the album that we're gonna show you, which will show the kits. But we have a variety of enrollment kits that you can uh, purchase. And if you choose to join by purchasing a kit, that membership fee, that $35 membership fee is waived. Um, so you don't have to pay that. And then you get 25% off your oils for the whole year. Obviously, I recommend option two and three, um, which is either by doing the membership fee or by doing the enrollment kit. Um, but however you choose, whatever option you choose, just let us know and we'd be happy to help you kind of get started in that process of using essential oils. Finally, the best is coming. You're about to have a beautiful baby and we're so excited for you. And regarding essential oils, my life has changed dramatically with them and Becky's life as well. Um, I have made it my responsibility to start sharing these with people because I've just seen so many amazing results by using them. And 
I just feel like it's my responsibility to start letting everybody know and educating so that you're using you and whoever else are using these the safest way possible. This is why it truly is an honor to introduce essential oils into your life. In addition, there are a few common questions that I want to answer. What is the best way to get started? Well, when you sign up or with an account, you or enroll, you can choose either wholesale customer or wellness advocate. So both get the same great discount. A wholesale customer means you just have a membership. Wellness advocate means you're starting to share them with others and you can make an income. So talk to the person who invited you to this. Hopefully it was us and you can see what is a better fit for you. And another thing, maybe a question you have is, I want to start slow. What do you recommend? So one way is you can pay the $35 fee and order a diffuser and a few oils and you're good to go. Um, or um, another question you might have is, do I have to start a business if I become a wholesale member? Actually, when you sign up, you make sure you choose the wholesale prices options, um, which is the wholesale customer, not the wellness advocate. And you cannot even do this as a business, as a wholesale customer, unless you, it's a little complicated, but unless you um, upgrade to the wellness advocate. So wholesale member, you can't even, you can't even sell the oils. Um, so, and then another one, maybe you have a question of specific health conditions. What do you recommend? So please contact either Becky or me via Facebook or email or in our group so we can help you figure out which oils or kit is best for you and how you can use them safely. And we're done, but this is simply the beginning. We could talk forever about doTERRA essential oils, but we have ran out of time and simply, um, but because they have made such a difference in our life and the lives of each person that we've shared them, we just want to keep sharing them with others. So perhaps you're already using them. If you have anyone that may need these and you probably thought of someone like your aunt or your boyfriend or your mom that could use these essential oils, send them our way so that we can help them learn more about how to get them the best prices and also have the right education so they're using them safely. And again, we're happy to answer any questions you have about using essential oils for you and your family, because it's truly our passion. And we have loved having the chance to share something that made such a difference in our lives. Again, please message us or email us. I'm going to leave on this slide right here. It has our Instagram account numbers, um, names, and you can message us on there. You can either email us, which I didn't put on here, but our emails are simple, naturalwellnessers at gmail.com. And yours is the soul essentials, right? Yes. That's at gmail.com. So yep. simple. You can contact either of us, but we're very honored for you having watched this webinar and been a part of this with us today. And, and again, um, we thank you guys for coming. Uh, those of you that wanted the recipes, we will post those in each one of the Facebook groups that you see here under the album sections. The album will be labeled expecting. In addition to that, I know that some folks wanted to come to the webinar today and they could not make it. So if you want to contact us, um, we'd be happy to send the recording to you via email. Thank you.